Welcome to our learning journey lesson for today, Chestnuts. What we're going to be doing is answering the question, can I use vipers to understand a story? Now, you might be a little bit confused about what that is, but that's absolutely fine, because to be successful today, we need to understand what viper stands for, use evidence from the text, and unpick an author's use of language. So today we're going to be answering questions all about Leon and the place between. Now I did record myself reading the beginning of the story on Friday and hopefully you've had an opportunity to read that. But if not, then I'm going to read it to you again today. When answering questions based on a text, we need to understand what the question is asking us to do. And Vipers splits questions into different areas. We have V for vocabulary, so that's all our word meanings. I for inferring, so trying to read between the lines and decide what the author is trying to tell us. It might be you infer about a character, about how they're feeling, for example. P for predict. E for explain, so that's when we use our evidence from the text to help us. R for retrieve, which is where you take things straight from the text. And S for sequence or summarise. So what I'm going to do first is read the story to you. But today I'm going to read one extra page once Leon has climbed into the box. We're then going to have a look at some questions together so you can get an idea of the type of questions that refer to each of these letters. And then you're going to have a go at answering some questions yourself independently. Right, let's get started. I don't believe in magic, said Tom, as he settled on the grass in the show tent. Around him the crowd waited impatiently for something to happen. It's not real, hissed Pete. It's only tricks. Little Mo looked disappointed. Shh, now, whispered their brother Leon. It will be magic. You have to believe. Look, it's going to begin. The lanterns went out. In the darkness, the crowd fidgeted with excitement. There was a cough, <coughs> a whisper, and then a loud hush. At last, a soft blue glow lit the stage and the curtains twitched. With a ripple of gold braid, the curtains slowly parted. Bang! Three jugglers tumbled onto the stage to the pounding beat of a drum. Skittles flew fast and furious, back and forth, up and over. Tambourines rattled loud and louder. Skittles spun high and higher. The jugglers twisted fast and faster. Then bang, the skittles went up. But they didn't come down. Everybody cheered and collapsed. The jugglers bowed and bounced away. Once more, there was only darkness. Now one dim spotlight found a barrel organ, still and silent on the stage. Everyone held their breath. The handle began to turn, but there was no hand upon it. Note by note, the tinkling song of a carousel started to dance from the pipes. Up jumped a barrel organ monkey, all made of wood and tiny hinges. He beckoned the moon to light the mechanical toys. A red-eyed crocodile snapped at a running boy's heel. A ballerina turned on her pink satin shoe. Painted animals paraded into the ark and a flying machine lurched through the air. Up, up and over the moon. At last, the barrel organ fell silent. No one stirred. For a moment, the tiny creaks of the mechanical toys cast their own spell. Then they slowly jerked awkwardly and were still. The solemn monkey took a stiff bow and the curtains closed to loud applause. Now, said Leon, edging forward in the dark. Now it's going to happen. Outside in the night, an owl hooted. With a swish, the curtains opened. Poof! 
A cloud of purple smoke filled the stage and there he was, Abdul Kazam. Sparks flew from his fingertips. Leon could smell the magic. Trust nothing, said Abdul Kazam, but believe everything. He threw his arms into the air and the magic began. Purple flowers blossomed from his sleeves. Silk scarves changed colour at a whispered word. Water poured into a hat, turned into night air. Bright white handkerchiefs became fluttering doves. The crowd was amazed. Then Abdul Kazam stepped aside and there was a door. A door into a box. Who will step into the magic? Leon knew it had to be him. He stepped up to the stage and climbed into the box. There was a gasp from little Mo and the door shut behind him. So this is where we got to in the story last chestnuts and I'm going to read to you one more page. Inside the box was not a box. It was a world of doorways to somewhere else. Leon fell down, down, down until he tumbled onto a carpet. Hello, said a boy in blue pantaloon trousers. Where am I? asked Leon. This is the place between, said the boy. Between what? Between there and back again. This is the place where magic sends you. So I'm going to stop the story there, Chestnuts. I'm really excited to see and find out and hear and think about where magic is taking us. You might notice a few things on this page that really excites you about what Leon might come across. So what we're going to do today is focus on different parts of the story and answer some questions about what we have read. So for our example, we're going to use this page, which is all about the jugglers. And what I've done is created some questions that we're going to have a look through. So a vocabulary question, an example might be, what does tumbled tell you about the jugglers? So what you do there is look through the text and try and find the word tumbled. And we can find it here. Now, we then need to think, what word class is tumbled? If you tumble, what is that? Now, hopefully we remember that it's a verb, it's a doing word, because that's what the jugglers were doing, they were tumbling. If we tumble, we tend to fall around. So tumbling, to me, tells us that the jugglers are probably being a little bit silly and they're falling over each other to get onto the stage. We then have I for infer. Did the crowd enjoy the jugglers? Now, this is inference because it doesn't actually tell us in the story exactly whether they did or did not. So what we have to do is look at the text and think and see and read what did the crowd do that might infer that they were enjoying the jugglers? Let's have a look. So to start with, it's just talking all about the jugglers. But then it talks about the fact that everybody cheered and clapped. What you need to think about is, if you cheer and clap at something, does that mean you're enjoying it? And it tends to, doesn't it? So we would then answer that saying, yes, because... The text uses the words, everybody cheered and clapped. And that is what you would do if you were enjoying yourself. We then come on to predict. And this question says, who will come on next? So for a prediction, there isn't a particular answer. What you'd be doing is thinking about another circus act that would be suitable to come onto the stage. You're using your subject knowledge and prior knowledge to help you. So you might say, I predict that a clown will come onto the stage next because you find clowns at a circus. Or you might say that I predict an acrobat will come onto the stage next because I've been to a circus and seen an acrobat perform. For the explain, we have the author uses a lot of paired words. What effect does this have? So we should remember that paired means two. 
So what again you're going to do is look through the text and find some paired words. For example, we have Skittles, Flu, we've got Fast and Furious, we've got Back and Forth, Up and Over. Then we have, so those are in pairs, but they're not pairs of the same word, are they? So we need to keep reading. We then have, tambourines rattled, loud and louder, there's a pair. Skittles spun, high and higher, that's another pair. Let's underline these. So we've got loud and louder, high and higher, and the jugglers twisted fast and faster. So again, we need to explain what effect this has on the text. What I think it does is make us visualise it even more because it's emphasising that word more than once, which means it's really important that we picture it getting loud and louder. We picture the skittles getting higher and higher and the jugglers twisting fast and faster. So the paired words are having more of an impact on the reader because it's really showing the importance and helping you imagine what they're doing. R is our retrieve. What instruments are playing? So again, we need to look through the text and think, what instruments have we come across? It's talked about jugglers, talked about skittles, and then we think, well, we were just looking at loud and louder. Instruments make a noise. So what is it that made that noise? It was tambourines. So that would have been our instruments. And finally, we've got S for summarise. Write a review of the jugglers in 60 words. So that would be you thinking, did they do a good job? Examples of exactly what they did and writing it in 60 words or less. So we might say something like, the jugglers fell onto the stage, threw skittles, banged tambourines and spun around. They were incredibly talented and the audience thoroughly enjoyed the performance. So what I've done there is done a quick review, quick synopsis of what the jugglers did. So hopefully that's given you a sort of idea about how you go about answering the questions and what strategies you might use. And you're going to do that for your task today. So there's two different tasks based on two parts of the text. We've got this section from the text here where you're going to answer what is night air? Why do you think he says trust nothing? What else might come out of his sleeve and why? How do the illustrations help explain the story? When did the magic begin? And pick three words to explain how people are feeling at this time. And the challenge task is on the new page that we looked at today. Why does the author use the word down three times? How do you think Leon felt when he landed on the carpet? What will the place between have in store for Leon? Who do you think the boy on the carpet is? Where does the boy say Leon is? And summarise Leon's thoughts on entering the box by creating a thought bubble for him. So a thought bubble is like a speech bubble. So what is it that you think Leon is thinking at this time? I really look forward to listening and reading how you have interpreted the story so far. Enjoy this task and speak to you later. Bye Chestnut.